welcome to the quick trip from the Psychedelic Support Network, where we hear expert answers to questions about psychedelic medicine and mental health. Joining me today is Dr. Stephen Mandel, an internationally recognized expert and pioneer in the use of ketamine infusion therapy to treat mental health disorders and chronic pain. Dr. Mandel has more than 40 years of experience utilizing ketamine as a board certified anesthesiologist and earned his master's degree in psychology. He is the founder and president of Ketamine Clinics Los Angeles, a leading ketamine infusion clinic in Southern California. Dr. Mandel is also a founder of the American Society of Ketamine Physicians, Psychotherapists and Practitioners, ASKP3, and was the organization's first president and currently is an active board member. Hi, Dr. Mendel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Jen. It's really great to be here. Wonderful. Well, um, I know that you have an incredible amount of experience and I want to jump right in. Can you tell our community how you got interested in ketamine as a mental health treatment? Wow. Yes, I was uh, interested in mental health treatments since I young person because uh, as soon as I started we moved around a lot when I was a kid I mean a young kid and as a result I got to meet new people all the time and say goodbye to people all the time and I kind of got into how that that impacts mental health later on in my family there was some experience with um, with depression and with uh, other behavioral challenges so when I went to medical, when I went to college, I majored in majored in psychology, and I got a full scholarship to do uh, clinical psychology as a graduate student. I had a uh, PhD program in clinical psychology, which I was uh, completing uh, um, when I had the opportunity to go to medical school. And um, I went to medical school, and I became an anesthesiologist. But I continued my interest in mental health. Professionally, I pursued anesthesia. When it turned out that ketamine, a drug I was using for anesthesia, became uh, known to really be an amazingly effective lifter of mood and reverser of suicidality, I just jumped on it. And I started applying the interest that had been latent since I was a child to my professional work. That is amazing. You know, this is something I have heard other uh, ketamine practitioners that we have spoken with mention just the fact that ketamine is this really familiar medicine for doctors, and yet it's being applied uh, in this unique way to, to depression um, and is sort of breathing new life into a very familiar tool. Um, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how ketamine works for treating depression and how that's different um, than traditional antidepressants. Oh, ketamine is quite different from traditional antidepressants. The way a, a, a Ford is different from a Boeing or a Boeing is different from a Ford. Uh, ketamine is a unique medicine, even among other psychedelic medicines. But medicine is a uh, ketamine is a psychedelic or dissociative medicine. It works actually by, first of all, let's just say, in contrast to the other tr traditional antidepressants, it works very quickly in hours to days as opposed to weeks to months. It's very safe. Uh, you can even give it to pregnant ladies if they're suicidal. It is, does not harm the fetus to nearly the same extent that uh, all the other agents are known to do. That's not a recommendation that it be given willy-nilly to pregnant ladies. But it works very differently. It works very quickly. It's extremely effective. Uh, in our clinic, about 83% of our patients experience 50% or more relief of their symptoms. Uh, there are no the, of the traditional antidepressants that give you that good a result. And... Um, so it's very fast, it's very effective, and it's very safe. Ketamine has virtually no side effects. It doesn't produce the obesity, uh, the loss of libido, and the feeling of locked in feeling that so many of the uh, anti other antidepressants do. It works by a totally different mechanism. Virtually all the other antidepressants work by uh, dopamine or norepinephrine. 
uh, as, a, as neurotransmitters. Ketamine works via the glutamate metergic system. And uh, in so doing, it actually modifies growth in the brain. It causes new growth in areas of the brain associated with depression. And this is just a remarkable thing. That, that, how do you know there's new growth in the brain? Well, in laboratory models, we can actually prove growth in the areas that were depressed. So it has an immediate effect of uh, changing your mood and uh, giving you a really transformative uh, disassociative experience. And then it causes new growth in your brain. It's very different from the traditional medicines, which you have to take once a day, every day, and which work very gradually over time if they do it all. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's, that is amazing. It's, um, it's incredible. The, the impact that ketamine treatment has had on, on patients with, with treatment resistant depression. I mean, just the, the statistics that you're quoting, I think are, um, amazing. And the fact that it is safe, um, is even, you know, even to boot a, a more appealing version of the treatment that, um, that folks should know more about. I know at, um, ketamine clinics, Los Angeles, you all are very focused on, on centering the client on really making sure um, that they are at the core of how you how you offer treatments. I'm wondering if you could share a little bit more about what um, what safe and ethical ketamine treatment looks like for you all at Ketamine Clinics Los Angeles. Well, we've developed our approach to patients over quite a bit of time, and I say we because um, I founded this clinic with my my friend, partner, son. Sam Mandel, and many of the protocols were developed jointly with him. Uh, he's not a medical person, but he's a very compassionate, knowledgeable person. He's been working in, in mood and suicide since he was an adolescent. And uh, so the quick answer to your question is we are patient focused. The patient comes first. So the, the entire set and setting of the clinic are designed to promote transformation for patients. Uh, we make patients safe and we make patients comfortable and we make patients feel relaxed and comfortable and secure. And that really promotes our, um, our good success. As far as ethics, um, again, putting the patient first, being transparent, uh, really fully disclosing, involving the patient in all decisions regarding his or her care, and not proceeding without consensus. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, I wonder, so this is just an addition to this conversation, if um, someone's a client at uh, Ketamine Clinics Los Angeles, what what would they experience um, when they came to you? What kind of engagement would they have with your team? What kind of support would they have when they were receiving care? Well, they come into a, uh, a warm and inviting reception area. It, it's clear that it's a medical facility, but it's also clear that it's inviting, that it's relaxing, that it's not off-putting. People don't feel like they're in a kind of a laboratory or hospital-like environment at all. They feel like they're kind of a someone's living room. Uh, they're greeted by people who really want to see them. I'm glad that they're there. And um, they're made comfortable. Uh, we have people fill out their paperwork. I shouldn't use the word paperwork. We, have, we get information for people using an iPad. They don't have to write stuff and they never have to write stuff more than once because it goes right to our, the, the responses they provide go right to our server and they populate all the relevant fields. You don't write your name. If you've ever gone to the doctor's office, I did recently, and this is a good doctor too. And I filled out my name on top of a form and then I filled out my name on top of another form. And then I filled out my name on top of a third form. Come on guys. Anyway, so people don't have to do redundant stuff. They're, they're, there's, they're, time and dignity are, are respected. And um, so they're made comfortable. They're brought into a room with a lounger. They can recline. Um, 
And they're, they're again, they're made comfortable with pillows, with blankets, uh, with soft lighting. And um, we establish an intravenous quickly and painlessly with very small needles and people who do this very well and do it very often. So they get very good at it. And um, monitors are applied, not intrusively, but monitors are applied with full hospital grade monitoring. Don't, we don't see any conflict between comfort and safety. And we, we make sure that people are fully protected and monitored as well as feeling very uh, cared for and nurtured. So uh, that's the start. Um, we provide noise canceling headphones and music for people who prefer it and almost all do. We do think it facilitates the experience. And um, after the patient is satisfied that all his or her questions are answered and they're ready to proceed and not until then, we proceed. That's the experience. Wow. That's amazing. It sounds like there's a lot of hands-on care, a lot of attention paid to, you know, using the patient's time well and helping them feel comfortable. Um, I know that can go a really long way towards helping people take what's usually a very vulnerable step, you know, to say that they need help. Um, and then to, to make an appointment and come in and maybe, tr maybe for many of them, try something brand new that they haven't tried. Um, so I'm really, it's really wonderful to hear you, uh, offer that support at every step. Um, I know people are really we we are mindful that uh, this is an everyday thing for us and we're extremely comfortable with it and relaxed about it for the person coming in for his or her first infusion. It's pretty out there. It's pretty scary. And they've heard about ketamine, the horse tranquilizer and ketamine, the party drug. And they're here. They are having this for treatment, what's really bothering them. They're really feeling kind of hopeless or helpless or worthless. They're not having pleasure in life. They're not able to accomplish their everyday tasks. Many of them have tried many other things before coming. So they are in a very vulnerable state. And we were present to that every time because it's brand new for them. That's so impactful. That is definitely a piece I have gotten to hear practitioners talk about both the, the vulnerability and the creation of safety. Um, and also, you know, how life changing these treatments are for so many people, how it can um, bring them back to baseline if maybe they're in a in a low um, and how that can maybe be the first time in years they may have felt like they were at a neutral and could sort of experience things in a way that um, feels more regulated than when they're having a depressive experience. Um, that's really, it's it's so wonderful that uh, this kind of care is available and that's a lot of what we do at Psychedelic Support is work to make more uh, connections so folks can access the care they really need. Um, I would love to ask you, so one, one amazing piece of your resume, and there's so much to pick from, um, is that you're a founder of the American Society of Ketamine Physicians, Psychotherapists, and practitioners, also known as ASKP3. Um, I wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about the organization and, and how you came to be a founder and also why this work is so vital to the field today. Oh, I became a founder because uh, I was in a meeting with a number of other practitioners. And at that time they were really not much more than a handful in the entire country. No kidding. And um, there were eight of us who got on a, a list and at that time getting together by phone in more than three calls that it linked together was very difficult. I had access to that. So I, I got people together and we spoke for a while in the fall of uh, 2016 and in 2017 we decided to form an organization and we we had our first formal official meeting i think in march of that year and I, we were inclusive from the very beginning uh ketamine is an orphan drug almost all drug information and in fact health information 
is acquired really from those who are selling it. But nobody is selling ketamine because there's no profit in ketamine for the people who produce it. It's a ubiquitous commodity drug primarily used for anesthesia. It's among the most widely used anesthetics on earth, has been for many decades. But for mood disorders, there's no booster for it. So we decided to come together as a booster, nor is there any specialty that's championing it. It's not the province of anesthesia, even though it's an anesthetic drug. It's not the province of psychiatry, even though psychiatry deals with behavior problems. Uh, it's not something that emergency room physicians focus on typically, even though many emergency room physicians are very good ketamine practitioners. It falls through the cracks, somewhat analogous to maybe to headache, where many different specialists bring their attention to headache, not because they have expertise from training, but because they are passionate about it and they get together and learn from one another and try to advance the field that way because there isn't a vendor who is disseminating information in order to promote its use. So that's why we founded uh, ASKP3. And our mission is to get ketamine out there for patients in a safe and effective manner. And I emphasize that because initially it was getting patients, getting it out there for patients because it really was only available in a handful of places. And I mean, literally not hyperbole in a handful of places in the whole country. Well, now it's available in several hundred and the quality varies very widely. So in addition to championing the use of ketamine, we are championing standards for providers and a code of ethics. That's roughly speaking what our goals are. And education. That, that's incredible. I was I was wanted to just ask, have you um, are those goals in progress around developing a code of ethics and setting standards? Is it I'm sure it's an, a moving target and always getting better. But I wonder um, if you have resources or materials that practitioners who are interested could take advantage of. We have developed a code of ethics. We have spent tremendous time and energy developing a national standard certification. And we are presently in the process of polishing that and developing it and making sure that it's rolled out in a uh, thoughtful and meticulous way that both protects and enhances all of the stakeholders, uh, including providers and patients. Wow, that is incredible. I'm so grateful for that work and all of the good effort that you all are, are sharing with the field that others can benefit from. Um, I would love to ask you uh, our final question, which we ask of all of our guests. Um, if you could have uh, an idea or a technique or a practice that you could snap your fingers and make part of the field, what would you choose? What, would, what do you want to see become a part of um, ketamine treatment, mental health care, psychedelic work, if you had to choose? It's such an opportunity to spend the afternoon with you, but let me confide, let me try to be disciplined. Um, if I had a magic wand, I would have all those who reimburse for insurance companies realize that this is a compassionate and economically effective decision. If they're paying for the pro people's Prozac and they're paying for people's Zoloft and they're pay paying for people's Ambien, they should be paying for people's ketamine infusions. It saves lives. It actually will reduce ultimate claim costs. It's the only reasonable thing to do for the subscriber who has paid his premiums. Wow. We, yeah, we could spend the whole, the whole afternoon talking about just that. I think that access piece is so critical and I'm really grateful that you named it because I know there are many, many patients for whom 
you know, the, the lack of insurance coverage is a, is a real barrier um, and can keep people from accessing care. That is life-saving, as you say. Hmm. Um, well, I, I'm going to put up the website um, right here where folks could learn more about Ketamine Clinics Los Angeles. Should they go there if they'd like to connect with you and your team? That's the best place. Uh, the phone number's on there, but it's 310-270-0625. The website is full of really very chock full of information for both uh, providers and for patients. And we welcome both. And there are drop down menus uh, uh, up along the top that will give you link to uh, both uh, popular press articles and research articles, not only on ketamine clinics of Los Angeles, but on ketamine as a treatment for mood disorders, uh, for PTSD, for suicidality, for OCD, for eating disorders. And we're also finding uh, enormous effects on postpartum depression and on uh, sometimes on disrupted sleep. Now, it, there's more on the website than I can recite at this time, but I, I invite you to per peruse it. Wow. Oh, that's so wonderful and really uh, exciting to hear the many applications, which are, you know, things that are being studied and that we've read about and hear anecdotes about but it's great that they're all in one place on your website and folks can learn more about if they might be a fit for this kind of healing. Well, thank you, Dr. Rendell. I'm really grateful that you took the time to connect with us and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Jen. Welcome to our interview series from the Psychedelic Support Network. Psychedelic Support is the leading directory of licensed mental health practitioners and community groups who provide mental health services related to psychedelic medicine and integration both online and in person at psychedelic.support. Joining me today is Dr. Stephen Mandel. Stephen Mandel is an internationally recognized expert and pioneer in the use of ketamine infusion therapy to treat mental health disorders and chronic pain. Dr. Mandel has more than 40 years of experience utilizing ketamine as a board certified anesthesiologist. He also earned his master's degree in psychology. He is the founder and president of Ketamine Clinics Los Angeles, a leading ketamine infusion therapy clinic in Southern California. Dr. Mandel is also a founder of the American Society of Ketamine Physicians, Psychotherapists, and Practitioners, ASKP3, and was the organization's first president and currently serves as an active board member. ASKP3 is a nonprofit professional organization dedicated to the safe, ethical, and therapeutic use of ketamine for mental health disorders and pain. Having administered more than 13,000 ketamine infusions, Dr. Mandel works closely with patients to treat mental health disorders, including depression, suicidality, anxiety, and PTSD, as well as chronic pain. Dr. Mandel often speaks at a variety of industry conferences and is frequently quoted in the media regarding common misperceptions about ketamine, recent studies and clinical trials, best practices, innovations in the field, the latest advances in treating mental health disorders, and how ketamine infusion therapy compares with traditional medications and treatments. Dr. Mandel earned his medical degree from the University of Southern California Keck School of Medicine and completed his residency in anesthesiology at Massachusetts General Hospital and the University of California, Los Angeles Center for the Health Sciences. He received a master's degree in psychology from the University of Cincinnati and a bachelor's degree from New York University. Dr. Mandel lives in Los Angeles with his wife, with whom he has four grown children and their golden retriever, Magellan. When he isn't caring for patients, Dr. Mandel enjoys sailing and skiing. <laughs>